in terms of manufacturing in electronics uh, domain. Uh, there are a variety of reasons. Uh, uh, one of the main reasons was that India signed the uh, IT1 treaty uh, back in 1996, 97 time frame, which led to a zero duty regime and uh, whatever domestic manufacturing was take, uh, taking place, that got, uh, uh, that vanished, uh, uh, that vanished because, uh, uh, you know, the Indian industry could not compete with uh, uh, the foreign uh, imports at zero duty because of economy of scale. Uh, Indian demand was very low uh, and therefore the, the local manufacturers were not able to produce it at competitive price. Therefore, uh, slowly and slowly, the whatever manufacturing was taking place got uh, diminished. Uh, however, as we stand here uh, in 2022, a lot has changed particularly since 2015-16 time frame, the government has given tremendous impetus uh, to electronic manufacturing. The government has come out with uh, uh, national electronic policy. Uh, <clears throat> that has really uh, triggered a growth in hardware manufacturing. Uh, looking ahead, uh, in the next few years, we see tremendous growth potential in electronic manufacturing in the country for a variety of reasons. One is that the domestic demand is growing tremendously. So there is tremendous uh, uh, potential available. Uh, B, uh, uh, due to geopolitical reasons, uh, the world is looking at uh, China plus one. Uh, earlier, uh, you know, the, the entire world went to China because of the price competitiveness, uh, and uh, they they would be able to set up industries uh, very quickly uh, for large scale manufacturing. However, with the geopolitical uh, situation as it is now, uh, the whole world, not only America, but the whole world is looking at alternative uh, sources of uh, uh, manufacturing. Uh, and with that, uh, India is really passed for growth. Yes, certainly I accept that there are several challenges. Uh, availability of raw material uh, for component manufacturing or product manufacturing. Uh, logistics is an issue. Uh, the logistics costs in our country are high. Financial costs are higher. The interest rates are higher compared to uh, you know, competing countries. Uh, for example, today the interest rates in India are about anywhere between 8 to 9%, mm -hmm. while in uh, uh, China, Taiwan, Japan, uh, you know, you get uh, anywhere between 1 to 2 percent as the uh, interest rates. So those challenges are there, but uh, we have to find ways to overcome them. Uh, the good thing is, compared to other countries which are also emerging in the sector, the good thing is, here is that uh, India has a large demand base of its own. If you compete it, uh, if you compare us with uh, other countries like Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, mm -hmm. Philippines, uh, where is the demand there? Very little, minuscule. Uh, Indian demand is huge. Today, uh, last year, as we know, the total uh, demand for electronic products in the country was about 120 billion to 140 billion dollars. And this is expected to grow much further. Uh, the government of India, Ministry of Electronics and IT, as well as the industry the research, reveals that the demand is going to go up to uh, $300 billion by 2026. Uh, that's a huge demand growth. And uh, that's available to the manufacturers here. So that is the positive side. The, the challenges uh, in terms of you know economies of scale, uh, th therefore better pricing from, uh, from uh, imports, uh, is a challenge. Raw materials availability is a challenge. Supply chain is a challenge. But we have to start somewhere. And I think the government has come out with very good incentives. And they have, uh, you know, created an environment uh, uh, which is pro-investment. And with this pro-investment, yes, it has taken some time to gain traction. But I think we are at a, we are at a, a point where we are past for growth. Uh, challenges will always be there, 
they are uh, in electronic industry, even for uh, developed countries, there are challenges of technology obsolescence. obsolescence. Uh, uh, so, you know, this part of business comes at uh, uh, the back. One is, uh, we have uh, we have a very long race to go. Uh, you know, this is not a sprint; it's a marathon. And in a marathon, you you do not start running from day one. You start slowly, gain momentum, and at the last uh, mile, uh, so to say, that is where you you know sprint. Same thing we have to. Uh, uh, consider in electronic manufacturing. There are challenges, but initially we have to take both the parts together. On one hand, uh, we have to develop infrastructure and ecosystem for component manufacturing so that, so that there is high value add and the industry really grows. Uh, there is a deep manufacturing and therefore deep manufacturing grows in the country. On the other hand, currently our electronic consumption is very very low compared to the population that we have. We have about 16% of world population. We consume probably less than 3% of global electronic production. How do we you know, accelerate that? Both approaches. One is deep manufacturing but also we will have to quickly uh, you know with the help of MNCs, the apples of the world or um, uh, 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 you know, uh, other uh, Dell, Lenovo, uh, HP, they are very large manufacturers of IT hardware, uh, mobile phones, uh, data centers. Uh, so they will come here initially and they will like to, you know, uh, use their current supply chain from overseas. But once everyone sees a demand developing in the country, even their supply vendors, they would set up shop here uh, for component manufacturing. So uh, they will definitely come. Together with that, it is in the interest of the MNCs that because of the logistics issues, they will want a component manufacturing here. So apart from MNCs investing for component manufacturing here and providing jobs uh, within the country, the Indian manufacturer, the Indian champions will also come out. The best examples are of uh, Dixon um, uh, and many other companies uh, who have forayed into uh, uh, electronic manufacturing. Well, you know, we have to be patient. Uh, look at uh, five to seven years ago when the taxation was really very high, the income tax uh, was, uh, rates were very high. Uh, there were all kind of uh, excise duties and sales tax, etc. Et now, reforms have been taking place. Uh, there were plethora of taxes in terms of uh, excise duty, sales tax, local tax, all that have been subsumed in GST. There has been the biggest reform in a, uh, in a mammoth reform for a country of the size of India. So that's a positive step. Even on the income tax front, uh, you know, uh, five to seven years ago, uh, it was as high as 34, 35%. Then the government of India reduced the income tax, for, uh, corporate income tax to 25% plus uh, some surcharge. For new companies that are coming in the country, uh, since 2018, the income tax rate has been reduced to 15% plus some surcharge. So it's about uh, 16, 16 uh, 17%. So the income tax rate from 34 to 35% has come down to 17 to 17.5%. So that is a big attraction for not only Indian companies to invest, but also the uh, you know FDI to come in. So I'm going kind of very bullish on um, the tax reforms that are taking place. We have still some distance to cover, but I'm sure we will cover. Okay. Vendors have been very supportive. So as a result, we have grown over the years. We are, uh, uh, and uh, over the years, we have diversified in other areas uh, other than EMS. We have uh, also launched some products 
uh, we in, uh, started with uh, uh, LED lights as a product, uh, which now uh, we manufacture in uh, in the country of Rwanda in East Africa. So uh, we make uh, LED lights for the African market. Then in 2016, we ventured into memory products. So uh, we were the sole supplier uh, to Sony uh, India for not only for the India market for memory products like the USBs, pen drives, SSDs, micro SDs, etc. But we were also exporting to Sony in Southeast Asia and Pacific, uh, as well as to Middle East and Asia. Uh, also, we were uh, uh, selling to HP. So from LEDs, we also included uh, uh, memory products. In 2017, we had a joint venture with a company by the name of MyTech in Taiwan, which is a Fortune 500 company. And by virtue of their joint venture relationship, but they have financial partnership with us and we have access to a motherboard for data servers uh, technology. And uh, as a result, we are making motherboards for data servers for the past uh, uh, two to three years. We have supplied about 3000 motherboards for data server, uh, data server requirement. Uh, now we are uh, uh, setting up a plant for uh, semiconductor packaging in Bivadi, Rajasthan, where the, the total capital outlay is uh, 150 crores. And the plant is, uh, uh, the building is ready. Uh, we are um, in the process of getting the equipment. Uh, we had the challenge of uh, getting the equipment on time because of the shortage of semiconductors the shortage for equipment and the lead time for equipment uh, became very long but however uh, we are very close to it now um, uh, we hope that we will be able to start uh, uh, at least end of line manufacturing uh, by end of this so it stands to spend anywhere between 800 to 1000 crores besides that we are also growing in exports so we are planning to invest in our mother company where we do uh, EMS activity for exports that uh, the two units manufacturing units that we have in the uh, not a, a special economics coming five years if I look at our, our uh, organic growth which is uh, the memory product or LED lighting or uh, uh, EMS business that is poised to grow at about 15% CAGR. If we look at uh, semiconductor packaging, that is a greenfield project for us, but the volume <coughs> uh, growth is expected to be very significant. So, uh, you know, there starting from zero, our forecast is that within the next four to five years, we will have achieved a turnover of about 600 crores. So, as a group, we we expect that in the next five to seven years we would be exceeding thousand crores in terms of sales